Hey, you could still get up Nah. He's on. He's on. It's a good one. It's a good one. Welcome back to the garage. We've got a good one for you today, ladies and gents. That is right. We are breaking out the working class zero citizens with some new terminal tackle from Guggen Squad to see if it might be the ultimate pairing. We have been using owner beast hooks for the longest time. Beast owner hooks, owner beast hooks, but I don't get those for free. So I'm gonna show you how to rig up one of these soft plastic swim baits with these new weighted underspin green series hooks. This is a seven aught, three eighths ounce two pack. And it should look something like this guy right here. So this is a working class zero battle shad. Some of our favorite big swim baits on the market. You gotta sign up for their email newsletter if you wanna even try and get a crack at one of these because they go fast. Uh, and if you're not signed up, you won't get the notification of when they drop and you gotta be at the cart like refreshing it as soon as they go live, otherwise they will sell out. If you wanted to order one battle shed with shipping, it's probably like 80 bucks. And if you want some citizens, I believe a two pack is like 34 bucks or something along those lines. I'm just answering this stuff because I know I've gotten asked it plenty of times when I include these baits in videos in the past. And so the Battle Shad already has, uh, I believe it's called the Flashy Swimmer by Owner on there. Uh, I bet you it's a 10 aught, maybe an 8 aught. But this guy right here is a 7 aught, more suited towards these 6 inch citizens right here. So you'll see we've got another Owner hook on this one. I bet you this is a 6 aught. So these were kind of designed around the Owner hooks. I'm thinking this might not align as well as the Owner hook because that, ah, see that weight's going to be out there in front. Nothing we can't work around for today though. So this could be a little bit of a challenge, but we are up for it. I'm gonna rig one of these baits up with the Guggen underspin. It should take a look at the nice packaging though. Working class zero citizen made in the USA, six inch, 1.5 ounce bait, snagless swim bait. Uh, it's kind of like snag less, so you can work through grass really well with these baits right here. This says heavyweight division. These are big fish catchers right here. Features the chaos air chamber, right? So the bait compresses really well. And so when you've got that hook in there, you get a bite and you go for the hook set, or when the bass bites down on it, it compresses the bait, then the hook is more likely to uh, penetrate the lip and you catch that fish. I almost don't want to damage one of these baits and put this hook on it knowing that it's not designed perfectly for it, but you only live once. People on the swim bait forums are not happy right now. That's not gonna fly. What if I slide this weight down? Oh, dude, cut it out. Oh boy, sketchy. I have to say the weight is not really sliding down, which is uh, exactly what you want nine times out of 10, but we're trying a science experiment here. <clears throat> Frustrating. Okay, so you can see we've managed to move the weight down about a mm, quarter to a half inch down this hook. And it's acting like it ain't gonna go much further. No thanks, I'm just gonna stick with my owner hooks. I can see the comments now. Don't worry, I don't disagree. I'm just trying something new here. What about those other hooks? These are seven knot quarter ounce instead of seven knot three eighth ounce. This weight's rotating. I don't advise doing this. Oh, see, we're almost right where we need it. This could actually work. 20 minutes into this video, we'll try and fish. Before I even install it, what I'm gonna do is bend the hook up a little bit because you'll see it kind of sits flush with the skin here at the top and I want it to sit up just a little bit. That way I get a better hookup ratio. Here's the real test, because I can do this with the owner hooks. Usually they don't break. I have broken them. <clears throat> Maybe I bent it up a little. Let me see. We are modifying these hooks today. Yeah, see, that should be good. Now it sticks up a little bit. Exactly what we want. Okay, Guggen Squad hook with the uh, the Citizen 6. It's not the best. It's gonna be a challenge. Let's go fish it, try and catch a giant. Hey, you fish Guggen, don't you? Nah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. I'll try anything else. Nothing, bro. No way. Nothing. Oh, my I'll God. Right back on. Bam. John B caught one on that Jackal Gantrell when we were here. The junior size. I went through some grass that time on the bottom. That's good. Ah. Just had the first bite. Let me check on this hook. Yep. It got sank through the plastic. Gonna have to re press that with this bait right here for me oftentimes how i catch them is i let the thing sink down to the bottom and i just creep it slow well so bryce just cast his crankbait from here all the way to the other sidewalk it cast it off <laughs> so he's going to check on it and see if it's still in usable condition <laughs> he's over there i mean it's probably a 60 70 yard cat like it's not a short distance from us to where that bait is didn't break it there you go all the way across this place so he walked across the bridge and here's his gear. I'm keeping my eyes on it, don't worry.
It's not bad on the Citizen either. Woo! That might be four. Oh, golly. There we go. That's a deal. <laughs> Came out. The Guggen hook works, y'all. <laughs> Shit. Tore up the bait, too, but I got some uh, SB weld on me. I'll show you how to use it. It's like some swim bait glue. So you can fix it up and reuse this guy because his nose is already torn up after one catch. Probably three and a half pounds. Solid one to start the day. It only took maybe a half hour. We walked from the bridge down here. Bada bing, bada boom. We'll see you, bud. Crazy, y'all. I would not have expected to get one that fast. Literally, just uh, what you saw is how we rigged it. We popped that hook up a little bit, so that hook point is just barely sitting through the top of the bait. Perfect. The nose is kind of fixed up. It's probably focused on my face right now. Y'all are on cinematic mode on the iPhone. Wind noise is probably fantastic. The hook does not look like it was designed for this bait at all. Now that this uh, little screw has started to get pushed down, it actually looks quite atrocious but uh, <laughs> we are making it happen out here. I'm gonna keep throwing it, try and get another fish or two, and if we do, I'm gonna upsize, and I'm gonna even throw that battle shad in today's video just a little bit later. So let's see if we can get maybe one or two more fish. It really didn't take that long at all. We covered maybe 200 yards of bank, which would normally seem like a lot if you are throwing like a crawl, uh, drop shot, just those easy baits, those easy numbers baits, but throwing a big swim bait like this, uh, I feel like we accomplished a big goal throwing it on the new termi, so terminal tackle. Anyways, major success. Let's go ahead and get back to fishing. We got more fishies in the water for sure. Okay, so Mike over at Working Class Zero also sells this SB Weld swim bait weld, I guess you could call it. Kind of like kind of like a JB weld, but it's a soft repair formula. So, but so here's the secret to getting longevity out of these Working Class Zeros. A little dab will do you. Trust me. I haven't used this in a while too, so I'm gonna give it a nice shake make sure I get all that I need on there I'm just gonna get the sauce all over the nose right there and then I'm also gonna hit the top to close the uh, the hole right there at the top that way the hook isn't sliding up and down out of this bait a whole lot so what will happen is here in just a moment I'll puncture that bait through and you'll see the surface on the back is just solid again so after a while you'll have a whole layer of this glue probably on the top of your citizens but that's how you're gonna get the most life out of them right instead of just tearing them up left and right so I'm just kind of holding this pinch for a moment it doesn't take long at all it sets in really quick. I'm also checking my floral carbon, right? Giving it a little pinch, running down the line, making sure there's no frays after that big fish. Sometimes it'll happen with the teeth. And I'm just gonna dunk this thing in the water real quick as that, it kind of helps the glue cure. And then we're pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna just put the hook right back through the top and try and get some O, y'all. And so now you can see as it's hardened, it's almost like a different coloration. There you go. Guggen Terminal Tackle with Working Class Zero. Bet you didn't think that was gonna happen, huh? Just because we'll probably get the questions, I'm throwing it on a Tranks. This is the 200 series, or size, I should say. The 300 is a is overkill for just small stuff like this, uh, but it's great for like a dedicated big swim bait only reel. The 400 is definitely too large. That's like inshore type of stuff. So the 201, it's a, the the 01 just means it's left-handed. If it was 200, it'd be right-handed. And then I've got these DRT varial handles on there. They're kind of tough to pick up too. But regardless, that's the gear setup. So. Let's get this thing back in the water. I'm, oh, just don't mind me, just throw. I'm just kind of creeping the bottom. You'll probably never cross me anyways. The scenery out here is off the chain. <laughs> Wait, is he going this way or is he going that way? See ya. Bryce is out of here, y'all. So that means we're just gonna walk this thing all the way till sunset. Throwing big baits in a place where most people would only throw like a chatter bait, a spinner bait, a crank bait, you know, the smaller stuff. And I'm not saying that this is like a gigantic swim bait. This is like when people start getting into bigger swim baits, six inches small, I would say eight inches, kind of the gold standard. 10 is getting to be sizable and anything above that is, you know, eight to 10 seems to be the sweet spot. Uh, and this is a six inch bait, but this is bigger than most people throw and they're intimidated to throw it. And yet, although I'm not catching near as many numbers as my last visit here, uh, which could always just be the day, right? There's so many variables when it comes to fishing. Uh, Bryce brought up a good point, which is that they just mowed the grass back there and all that crap is in the water and it's just dirtied it up. And maybe that has an effect, maybe it doesn't, but regardless, a lot of folks have never even thrown a bait this big. So hopefully through this video, you gain a little bit of confidence despite the fact that I've rigged it up with a hook that is not designed for it at all. <laughs> you wanna see a spot that doesn't ever get fished. I have a feeling it's right here. In case you were curious if the bass will eat fish this size, the big bass in here are definitely eating that guy right there. I believe it's a gizzard shad. So, <laughs> yeah, 
This is small time apparently. One hour later. Okay, we've been walking for a while. We're gonna do it. We're upsizing. That's gonna get him. Quick size comparison. We're about to Palomar knot this guy up and get right back to it, man. This is gonna have me stoked if we catch a fish on this. Oh wow, that just feels heavier You're cutting it. Two hours later, we are switching it up. I gotta get my confidence back. We saw that gizzard shad. We know the fish like the shad cranks and whatnot here, so I'm just going all white with it. I have gone back to a six inch citizen. It's time to do some work. Oh my fuck. right here he just totally inhaled the bait and must have let go he bent it in half dang it cast it all over there and couldn't get that thing man if i had a jig if i had any other bait i'd just toss it in there as a secondary but this is all i'm throwing Hit it right when it hit the bottom. Come on. I've been getting bites here. Let's go. He's on. He's on. It's a good one. It's a good one. There we go. Come on. Yes. Yes. Yes, the biggest bass I've ever caught here. No way. Come on. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. We might have overshot it. I think it's like three and a half pounds. Not the biggest we've ever seen out of here. But it looked big in the water and it fought like a freight train. Did y'all see that? The rod was loaded. This is not a light rod. They feel like fighting today. We're breaking out the scale just because. Oh, I've been getting so many bites, but it's been hours since the last fish. This has just got my adrenaline pumping. Where on earth is the scale? Oh, come on. Let's get this fish back in the water. We're going simultaneous GoPro slash Instagram story on them, y'all. Wow. Bait still seems perfect, so we're just gonna go. Man, it, it sounded like the line was frayed the whole time I was reeling. It sounded bad. It didn't sound smooth. I don't know if it was something with the reel. It just sounded clanky and it was making me nervous. I'm like, please do not break off. Okay, where's the big one? Jeez, we're just hitting that same cast right here. Right after it hit the bottom and I started creeping it. Let's go. I'm not mean, so don't come after me. No, 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 it's all good. Uh, he hit a 360. Hey, bud. Okay. I just want to hit this whole bank though, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast. Yeah, you're good. Oh my fucking god. Oh my. It hit it so hard, but didn't commit. It grabbed the tail and started to take it out deep. I mean, it was swimming with it. That was super random, but I went through some grass and it like took his eye off. Get that glue in there. Fix your eyes on your baits too. Oh my carp. Man, I just let this thing sink. These big swim baits, they can be a mental beat down. <laughs> you know you're hunting for the big ones, but sheesh. I just missed that last bite. It was like right here. So I walked over to this side and cast it and tried to hit it from a different angle. And uh, I didn't catch it. And that would be exactly when if I had a secondary rod on me, I would have just switched out to the, you know, whatever it is, Texas rig, who knows. And uh, you could easily catch that fish. It's just these bigger baits attract a lot of fish. And so they bring them out and you get, uh, you get a lot of those followers. So you don't see that a whole lot with the smaller baits, to be honest. Um, but you'll get a lot of followers on these big baits. And so once you find out where they're at, that's when you can make that switch and you can capitalize, right? Well, 
if you want to catch fish on a big swim bait, the best way to do it is to only carry the one setup because you're easily going to tell yourself, well, I'll just throw the Texas rig for a few minutes. I'll just throw the crankbait for a couple minutes, whatever it is, whatever is your confidence bait. And then you're done messed up and you're not going to catch them on the big bait. So you really got to just stick with it. And that is why I only brought the one because I bet I could have had, I don't know how many fish I could have had. I mean, I've walked so much of this bank, but we're not taking the easy way out, I'm trying to get them on the old citizen. And we've got a handful of bites. So if we can get one more decent size, I'm going to be very happy. They have got this side deranged. I could see some rocks right there. I was curious if there might still be some bass in here. I figure if I find one, it'll be hungry. Oh, I spooked some bait. I still see rock and I still see grass. So there could be a fish here. This is insane. Oof, just had a good one. Oh boy. Not good. That may be it, y'all. That's all we've got for you today, but be sure to subscribe. We have some jam-packed episodes for y'all coming very soon. A little bit of boat issues. I'm not going to spoil much. You're going to have to wait and see until then. Definitely encourage y'all to get out with some big swim baits, though. If you put in the time, you will find the giant fish. Springtime, excellent time to throw them. As you get into summer, you're going to have to get out early, stay out late. It's going to be tricky. You're going to have to work low and slow. Spring is an excellent time to get on them. Fall, same thing. Big swim baits, grab you some and get out there and get to catching.